Hi everybody, it's Angel Shaver, a Stampin' Up! Independent Demonstrator from Kansas, and we're going to try this again. I learned something very valuable earlier today, which is if you haven't actually done the specific technique that you're doing, practice before you try to teach others and show it on video. So I got rid of my first try. I spent time practicing, seeing if I could figure this out. And I thought that I would show you a better way to do this. So we're just gonna get started. Okay, I have already cut the cardstock and the card front out of the same DSP, so this is all ready to go. I also cut the I cut the ice cream out of this front piece again, and I cut the window sheet. This, if I don't know if you can tell, but it's actually a half an inch smaller all the way around on this one. And I've already cut out the ice cream scoops and the dish and the spoon and all of that. So we're just going to put it together. Hopefully it'll go together this time. I'm going to grab my fast fuse and make... Put some adhesive around the um, around the ice cream opening so we can get the window sheet to sit on there. I think I got it a little high, and fast fuse is so sticky. I don't know that I. Can just going to trim it. That's what happens. If you make a mistake, you get things a little beyond where you want them. Just pull out your handy dandy stamp and trimmer. Trim that off. Nobody will ever know the difference. Okay. Now, we're going to see if we can do this the way I figured, I think I figured it out. Maybe. I'm going to take the colored ice cream and I'm going to arrange them on the back of Let's see if you can see this, sort of. On the back of this card, before I put any adhesive or the sequins or anything, I'm going to figure out where these go. Okay, and I'm looking to see where this is lined up. It's at 23 and a half. So we'll put it straight and put the card front. This goes at 10 and a half. So we'll go up to 11 and a half. Let me think. This is 14 and a half to 23 and a half. So that should be in the center. And it moved on me. 
That's so why grid paper is really, really a good thing. So 24 by 13. And we go up to 11 and a half, which is right there. And we move it over one. Okay, there it's all on the lines, and then we put the stamp of the jig right there. That will come of importance later. So now we move those. You know what? I did practice this, but I'm thinking, and I'm thinking this is what I did. Oops. Put this in the middle. So it's 13 by 23 and by 11 and a half. So right there. Okay. Now. I keep scooting that one when I have to scoot my card base. Because I'm trying to leave things exactly. Maybe I should put a little washi on it for right now. I think I might. Just a little smidge of washi tape. And this is going to keep it where it belongs. We'll try this again so that doesn't scoot on me. It's 13 by 13. About right there. And we bring it down to the 11 and a half mark. And that's Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay. Then, we figure out where the ice cream scoops go. Oh, what am I doing? This is real. I did practice this, but it's, it's important that I use my brain and not scoot things away. Okay, now get my glue dots out because I'm going to fix 
these exactly where we want them. I'm going to be excited in a minute when this works. And you all are going to think it's magic. It's not magic. It's just proper use of tools. Okay, now we'll get glue dots on the back of those ice creams. Actually, I think since they're there, we're just going to put a little drop of Tombow on them. Then we fit the card base with the stamp of a jig and rub. And there, oh man, there was our ice cream, but that crumb cake one came off and the peach was slip sliding away. So, if they're not perfect, that's why. We'll, we'll say that's why. Okay. Now, we take This is a dangerous thing for me to be doing live because if this doesn't work either, we're all in deep trouble. We take the, that was silly me, but I know the dimensions. We take the foam strip and we run it around the ice cream. Opening, around the opening at the three scoops. Get it stuck down really good. Then I'll get my scissors and snip that off. And then we're going to put it down at the bottom of the card so that it will pop up fine and we're gonna go ahead and do that on the sides as well i just want to make sure that here after bit it pops up where it's supposed to I'll stick that back on the sheet. Then I am going to go ahead before we put anything in there, before we take off the adhesive, 
I am going to make sure 22 and a half and 13 and a half that we are going to get this correct. There's 11 and a half. And okay, so it should be approximately right there. I'll put my stamp of the jig right back down. Take my foam strips and move them so I get my sequence, my sprinkles, and I'm going to put a few sprinkles in the middle. I did manage to salvage most of the sprinkles from the other card. I'll clean that all up later. There will be just a few hiding in that card. And then... Go ahead. I'm going to leave the washi. I don't know how we're going to get off later, but I'm going to leave it on. Take off my adhesive, off my foam strips. Okay, here we go. Get it going the right direction. And use the stamp of the jig. And just press that down. Then have some washi to peel off. Okay, everybody say a prayer that this is going to work. I'm a little nervous. I give up if it doesn't. I will say, oh, Technique Thursday didn't work out so well. Have to keep practicing. Um, there's some washi over here. I gotta get off. Make sure that's yay! It's not a hundred percent straight, but we'll pretend that's on purpose. But you can see the sprinkles and the ice cream behind the sprinkles. And the very fact that you can see a little bit of the background paper just looks like there's extra sprinkles on top. So I will get these um, sprinkles put away in my stamp of a jig. And then we are going to glue on the dish. And the spoon and put a sentiment. Yeah, maybe in a moment like that, when you need things to stay put exactly where you put them, um, Tombo is not the best idea. Because it does give you just a little a moment where it will slide around where you want it. Well... When you don't want it to slide around, that's kind of a problem. It's okay if this slides around a bit. There's some extra glue that I need to get off. All 
right. And then I'll get out the fine tip glue to take care of the spoon. And then we're going to do the sentiment and the inside of the card. Gotta get this cap back on this glue, but it's not the easiest thing in the world to find that tiny little opening. There we go. All right. We are going to use the pool party cardstock for the sentiment. And I've decided that I want it to say, you're sweet. So I'll take both of those out of there. And grab my block and the great news about the foot of Palmer is you can put them both on the same block so you can make it do what you want and you can move around so that they look like you're going to want them to look now I think I will use, um, I think we're going to use Berry Burst for this. Oops. And we're going to use the wipe and clean off block in my hands. because I just put it right in the stamp pad. Okay, now we're going to tap, 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 tap. And I'm going to leave some space around it because we're going to um, use a big shot and cut that out here after a bit. And I wanted to have enough room. Now, we're also going to stamp the inside of the card. And I like to just do all my stamping at once. Before I pull the big shot up here. So we'll put these away. And get out the cone. Close this up. The cone is not very burst. The cone is crumb cake. Here's the cone. And we tap, tap, tap on the crumb cake. And then we're going to put it in the corner of the card front. 
and then clean it off. And then we're going to put the little um, whiffle marks, I think that's what they're called, on it. And this time, instead of using a darker color, like we did, like I did, um, did I do that? Maybe on a card I made yesterday, I think. I am just going to grab the stamp that will add the texture, and we are going to use the crumb cake again and see what happens. Make sure you can see. All right. And then go stamp, stamp, stamp. We're just going to line that up on the bottom of the comb. And there we have the texture. I don't know how well you can see it, but it is there. And close up the crumb cake. Now we're going to add the top of the ice cream cone. Get them both out of there while I'm thinking about them. Okay. And we're going to use Berry Burst and Rose Red. So I think we're going to use Berry Burst first. Little fingerprints. I hate it when that happens. We'll uh, try to do something about those later. Not sure what. So there is the berry burst. Close that up. Ah, I am just trying to be very burst colored today. Maybe I meant to match my shirt. I know you can't see at this moment, but I'll show you before I go for the afternoon. Now we will use Rose Red. Okay, look through here. Stamp. There it is. Just a hint of difference on that swirl. I'm probably going to redo this before I put it inside the card since it left fingerprints. But I um, want, and I want to go ahead and finish cutting out the sentiment. So let me get that done. Scoot the card over for just a second. Grab the big jot. And then 
we will slide the sentiment in there and figure out which of these stitched shapes I'm going to want to use. It looks kind of like an oval might be the appropriate shape for that. So I will just put the oval on there. Put the other big shot on top and just send it through. There's my oval sentiment, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to want a heart on that, so I will get a heart out. I don't have any berry burst hearts, but that will work just fine. Put a little heart on that sentiment. I'll move all of these. I'll clean them up after a bit. Grab my card. I'm going to put some dimensionals on the back. I'm down to minis. Which I like the minis a lot. So, we'll just pop some mini dimensionals on here. A couple more. Peel off of the back of those. And don't forget, there's that exciting flash sale from 11.59 Mountain tonight until 11.59 Mountain tomorrow. And if you are a first-time subscriber to... Um, Paper Pumpkin, you can get your first month's kit for only $5. So here we have it. Take two worked much, much better. So I'm sorry about the mess if you all watch take one. But here is the card that we worked on today. And I will see you. Oh, I'm going to look at you. I will see you next time. Thursday at 2 o'clock Central. It will be in a different location, so we might have fun playing with the camera, but um, I will see you next Thursday. I will be here at 2 o'clock Central Daylight Time. And just so you can see, here's my shirt, and here's my hands. I think my hands felt like they needed dressed up to match my shirt today. So I will see you next week.